LVMH CFO says that she haven't she isn't convinced that becoming more affordable is the answer to the company's disappointing quarterly performance. I made another video talking about how LVMH had experienced some decline in revenue and how a lot of that decline in their revenue had to do with losing of consumer appetite in China. And I mean, that's even been a similar type of case, even for caring, because caring has really relied heavily upon marketing as brand like Yves Saint Laurent and Balenciaga and Bottega Veneta in China as a very large potential market for them to tap into for additional revenue. And I mean, even from the brands of caring, even though it's a competitor of Louis Vuitton, obviously, I can really see still a lot of similar signs of weakness in whatever products LVMH is trying to project and it's trying to really advertise. And I think that it's especially pretty funny. And I think that anybody would find that it's laughable that the CFO of this such, a you know, the largest fashion house, luxury fashion house in the world isn't at all convinced that maybe trying to introduce some more affordable products, some more affordable luxury products for the consumer could actually turn out to be of a potential benefit. Now, to give her the benefit of the doubt, I know that a lot of times, even recently, the strategy or the ethos of the strategy for large brand luxury uh, fashion houses like Caring, which has Balenciaga, Saint Laurent, Bottega Veneta, and like LVMH, which is all a bunch of different companies like Louis Vuitton, Dior, those types of companies, you know, not, um, you know, they were pretty much always trying to cater to the top 2% of consumers because as a statistic for the luxury industry, even though the top 2% consumers, it's obviously a very small proportion, they actually end up spending like around 45% of the money. So it's pretty much like extremely wealthy individuals making, you know, making very big purchases and pretty much splurging on these luxury items in comparison to maybe some a lot poorer individuals who can't really afford as much, but maybe they want, they may want to save up for everything like every year or two. Like even I said it myself, you know, like I would really look at maybe something that I would like and be able to save in for it, like over a period of like maybe a year and a half or two years before being able to buy it. But I think that the fact that the CFO of Louis Vuitton, she isn't at all concerned about affordability. It kind of just comes off as very surprising to me because just the way where some of the bags are going, the bags are like this big and like, like you can barely fit anything in them rather than having some small design for the monogram and everything. And it just like comes across as very confusing and counterintuitive to me as to why they don't think that maybe trying to maybe introduce some more value to their bags compared to what they used to have before could actually help the company maybe turn things around and maybe attract more consumers. Because after all, if the if the revenue in the rate at which LVMH is able to sell different products is going down across the board for many of its companies, then I think that's even demonstrating that even for those ultra rich 2% of consumers, like how I mentioned from that statistic that those consumers buy like 45% of the luxury goods and they're extremely important for caring and LVMH and those other types of uh, companies that are outside of the caring and LVMH umbrella to be able to generate revenue. If they're even trying to pull back on some things, then I really think that that demonstrates that LVMH and those types of companies, which are very much specializing in luxury goods, they're experiencing, you know, or maybe they're pricing their you know, their products at too much of a premium. And, you know, I don't mean to say anything against it because, you know, I really love to still go to um, the Louis Vuitton store, the Dior store, those types of stores from those companies, because sometimes obviously, even if I can't afford to get every, get anything every time that I go in, I just like to go every once in a while just to see about what their products are doing and how it compares to actually things that they used to sell in the past or things that I may be familiar with from my own collection. And I think that, you know, more and more what I'm seeing is that it's becoming increasingly difficult to even get anything that's of value. Like, for instance, I have some pieces that are like from eight or nine years ago that are still in really great shape that I still use a lot and I still love to wear. But pretty much compared to what the price is now versus what it's compared back then, it's maybe like 50, anywhere from 50 to 70 percent less of the price you know, I'd probably say like 50 or 60, maybe in some case it could be like 70 or almost easily, you know, an increase of like a hundred percent or even more across many fashion houses, even 
things from Saint Laurent that I have from uh, caring. And I think that's interesting to think about what's really motivating these fashion houses to continue increasing prices or increasing such a substantial price increase for all their products. Because a lot of their products, like even in the case of Yves Saint Laurent or some other staple items from Louis Vuitton, they're, you know, they pretty much been made for years. And now with the price increase, they're not only more expensive, but they're made from significantly cheaper products and materials that they're outsourcing to be made out of countries many times outside of the United States. Because I even know like someone one time asked me about like one of my bags, my Louis Vuitton bag that I have. It's the only one that I have from 2016. That's a lot better quality than whatever bags are selling now. And, you know, he was just asking where the bag was made because when I used to look for my bag, when I was just interested in buying it and everything, I mean, I was just, you know, like a lot of those bags, they were made in Spain or parts of Europe. And in comparison to say the craftsmanship in America, Europe, and those types of other countries overseas, not necessarily part of, uh, you know, China and those surrounding areas, but the countries in Europe, or France, Spain, you know, England, those types of areas, they're very much well known for their craftsmanship and their artisanship, and also especially even Italy. And I think the matter of the fact is that Louis Vuitton not paying those artisans as much as just an example of one of the companies that's under the LVMH umbrella. And the fact that they're still even charging so much more as if those products were still made from the best artisans in the world, say in Italy, in Spain, Germany, you know, France and Paris, where where they uh, you know, where it's pretty much the fashion center of the world. I think that it's just extremely concerning that they're still very much trying to ride off decades of years of much better quality than whatever they had now and just train trying to put like all the excuse um you know in terms of inflation and i mean that's in a sense that's what's like that's what like every company is doing across any industry we're in but i think that the way that lvmh has been doing it and it's and it's and its competitor caring uh that's that's run under francois pinot i think that they're even attaching even more of a premium to the price increases for different goods and commodities that, um, you know, in comparison to other industries, because after all, everyone's going to be under the, pre the, the pressure of inflation, because even if you're a big fashion company like LVMH that pretty much tries to buy out all the buildings and properties that it owns, it's not going to change any fact that they still have to pay taxes. They still have to pay property taxes. They still have to cover operating expenses and several other, other expenses associated with running their stores and how that pretty much puts so much of a pressure more on the direct quality and the price points that they're setting for different goods. And I think that, again, like how I've mentioned in the title of this video, just really trying to provide some commentary on what the LVMH CFO has been saying and what her perspective is on all this is I feel like, unfortunately, she could be open for a rude awaken awakening because even if I compare some things from Louis Vuitton that I've seen in the past and how they were priced versus how they're priced now, it's completely night and day. And it's like, if we were to hypothetically want to continue getting a great value for the closer, you know, luxury uh, consumers would want to continue being able to, you know, really get more of their money's work for very beautiful clothes and having them be able to last for for years and years, like how it's been in my case, whenever I bought something from them or from that LVMH or carrying umbrella, they've lasted for a long time and they still last. They're very good products. But now that type of illusion of durability and how it interacts with affordability is unfortunately seeming to fade in the fashion in the fashion sector and in particular in the luxury sector. And, you know, I'm sure that the CFO of LVMH as well as other executives like Bern Monsieur Arnaud, they're really thinking about different types of perspectives to tackle this issue and whether they could try to maybe try to experiment with introducing some more affordable products that could then lead up to maybe more sustainable revenue growth that wouldn't decrease as much as they thought or they anticipated and kind of send shockwaves of anxiety or concern throughout the fashion industry. But I feel like for now, with the way that they're going, like for instance, they introduced some very small bags that are like more than $5,000 like rather than extremely rich individuals for which inflation isn't a problem and that they don't really feel any of the pressures of inflation, I just find it extremely hard for anyone to justify buying these small types of bags because I can even just say personally because 
I go around California where, you know, a lot of people, they spend money, a lot of money on clothes or these types of things. And you just see what people wear when you're walking around and stuff, even at the mall, or you're just relaxing on a weekend or wherever you're somewhere. And the fact is that I've really seen barely anybody wear these smaller types of next generation bags that LVMH has been, you know, manufacturing. And I feel like talking about the bags, even though it's one sector of the entire range of products that LVMH offers, it's very much indicative because their luxury bags and their leather goods sector, like what I like to call and like what they the materials that they use, it pretty much makes up, like I've said, like I've seen some people anticipate that it can easily make up like 50% or even 60% of the total revenue that LVMH makes. So any product category for LVMH that makes up like half of its revenue, it's extremely important for the company to consider and how they would continue prioritizing the, uh, you know, the goods that this company or the goods in this product category that the company makes moving forward. And I can just say that a lot of the quality in terms of the leather and what they actually use in terms of the canvas, say, for example, Louis Vuitton or even Dior, it's not there compared to what it was even a few years ago. And I think that it's just really showing, also, also showcasing some very emerging long-term economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Because pretty much it seems like before 2019 and the COVID pandemic, before there were all these supply chain, chain disruptions and everything along those lines, it really feels like companies tried to put in a lot more effort in terms of the materials and other types of you know fabrics that they were incorporating in their products. And now with them just always trying to make new products pretty much day and night, I mean, I know that's their job, but you know, just the way that they've been really trying to automate and always speed up things, it really makes it harder for the consumer to assign as much value or as much desire to different types of products that they manufacture. And, you know, if say we take the position in the, in, you know, this, in the assumptions into place that the LVMH CFO has been saying and what she's been not, she's been expressing that she's not necessarily convinced that becoming more affordable is the answer then Obviously, if they're just going to continue making things more expensive like they have been, it's just going to continue to break the consumer's wallet and pretty much force individuals to not be able to pretty much buy anything from those, buy any of their products anymore. And I feel like obviously they have to strike a fine balance between these different types of areas, which would actually determine whether they can sustain their revenue growth further into the future and prevent some quarterly decline in sales. I like how they had. Uh, like how they are witness from the most recent earnings report for LVMH.